Okay. We're almost there. We're maybe 30 seconds away from a quorum. Hope everyone's doing well on this lovely Thursday evening. It is Thursday evening here. Most of us are in North Carolina. That's just most of us. We got over there. Okay. Excellent. I want to welcome everybody to our tequila class tonight, um, which I'm very excited about. I don't know why we chose May. Random happenstance. Uh, okay. So hopefully everyone or most everyone or almost everyone or however you say a vast majority got the kit of stuff. We're going to be making cocktails out of these things. So I hope you have them. If you don't, let me know. We'll figure out a workaround if we have to. Uh, and also, you should have gotten and hopefully printed out or for those of us that can use digital things around fluids, uh, maybe you just downloaded it onto your, your uh, device. I printed mine out because when I get water all over this, it's going to be okay. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do the cocktails on the left, uh, starting with the high altitude walking through the Paloma Fresa and the blood in the snow. Uh, um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Shannon Healy. This is Alley 26. For those of you, I see a lot of our normal friends know that this is not the back bar you normally used to seeing. We are now on the dining room side because as of last night, our bar room side is, is open for a small number of guests. So in person, uh, drinking and dining, we're very excited about it. It's been long enough. Um, and hopefully we can continue to do it as responsibly as you know, humanly possible and then grow that. So thanks everybody on the call that's been with us so far. So let's talk about this class. And we're talking about tequila. Now when you got it, it said high altitude. And that meant I was referring to tequila. So we said blanco or silver or plata, which just means silver, or white, which is blanco. You see a lot of redundancy here. I mean the clear ones. So if you had a different style of tequila, it's not like you're gonna be making bad drinks, but these drinks were designed with the kind of very overt articulated herbaceousness that is really popular with, or like really noticeable with, with Blanco or white tequila. Because the difference between Blanco Reposado, which is kind of the middle grade, and Añejo, which means aged, is exactly that, it's age. And specifically, age in barrel and the increasing barrel contact that comes with smaller barrels. So we chose the one with very, very, very little barrel contact because we wanted the story to be about the base distillate for these co cocktails rather than kind of aging. Um, so I could talk a goodly long time about tequila, but lucky for you, I'm not going to. Uh, we have a friend here, Ray Ramos, uh, who represents Coralejo. Uh, and I was hoping, Ray, you could say a couple words about Coralejo in or in tequila in general and why uh, you think it makes great cocktails. <laughs> All right. Well, then, can you guys hear me? Can yeah. You? Okay. I can't well, see you. I'm Ray Ramos. I'm the director of Hacienda Coralejo. <laughs> from Los Angeles, California, born and raised here. So a uh, little history about Coralejo. It dates back to the 1700s. Hacienda Coralejo has been there since the 1700s. In 1994, Don Donald Rodriguez purchased the, the Hacienda and refurbished the whole distillery. So back in the 1700s, the Spaniards left some of the old Charentine distillation um, tanks at the distillery, so he refurbished it to, uh, to, to upgrade everything. So I, I just, as of yesterday, uh, May 8th, we just completed our 25 year anniversary for Leo being sold in the United States. So we're very proud of that, 25 years. So basically what, what the difference between Coralejo and actually we're basically 
from the town of Benjamo, Guanajuato, which is four and a half hours north of Mexico City and three and a half hours south of Tequila Jalisco. So we're basically, there's only a few tequila distilleries that are based out of Guanajuato. We are one of the few. So basically the difference between our, our, our brand and everybody else is that, you know, it's, it's, it's a historic hacienda in, in Guanajuato. They do a different type of processing on distillation, which they do the old uh, column stills first. And then the second distillation, they use the Charentine distillation process, which no other tequila, does, no other distillery does that. We're the only ones that do that. And just for the silver that you have there, you're going to get more of a white pink peppercorn uh, mint taste to it with a lot of floral, agave flavor, sweet and spearmint, more of a light and crispy on the finish. And I'm sure you've got, got a little bit of that finish on there. And, and for us, for Cordillera, we, use, we do a lot of, you know, cocktails with the silver. And then we're starting to do a lot of silver right now, especially silver is a big thing here. As you well know, usually we're doing a lot of Reposado, but everybody starts going to the silver, uh, which I think I like Reposado better. I'm more of an age guy. I like that age type of tequila. And just to give you a difference between our silver and our Reposado, our Reposado is aged for four months in 10,000 cast liters. The difference is that, we, that they have the 10,000 cast liter barrels have different, three different types of wood, which is French, American, and Mendocino. Let me when you say three different kinds of wood, you mean three different kinds of oak. Oak with oak. Three different types of oak. So they're all three different types of planks, actually, on the wood. Our anejo, I mean, so going back to the ripple. So the ripple, you're going to get more of a vanilla, honey, spice, little hints of oak in it with a little palette of lemon, lime, and peppercorn on our ripple with a medium, more of a warm, medium finish on our reposado. Our anejo is aged in 200 liter barrels for one year. And you're gonna get more of a hint of cocoa, vanilla, with a little palette of oak caramel with white peppercorn, and more of a full body finish. And I'm not sure if a lot of you are aware, but Cornell makes six different types of uh, tequilas under their premium line. And then we have our ultra premium line, which is the Los Arangos tequila. And then we have our luxury line, which is our 1821 that we sell here in the US, but it's very limited. Okay. So they're very, so, they're all if, if you wouldn't mind, Ray, just real quick, um, would you talk about the effect of altitude? We're uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the lowlands of, of Guanajuato. Okay. So we're not as one of the lowlands. It's flat. It's basically it's a flat land. So we're basically on the other side of the Jalisco Mountains. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking for flavor notes from highland or, or high altitude or low altitude tequila, would you say the peppercorn was, or like the pepper, was is, is something that comes out with lower altitude tequilas or? Uh, basically the peppercorns basically comes out, it's coming out of the more of the, of the barrel. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 you know, I talk to a lot of people, sometimes when they say the plant, the agave plants from Jalisco and the agave plants from Guanajuato, there's a difference. I mean, I can tell you right now that I was just there two weeks, a week ago, and a lot of the big companies are starting to grow their agave plants in Guanajuato because there's no more room in Jalisco. And I mean, I could tell you, who, I could tell you, I could talk about tequila all day because I've been doing this for 29 years. Okay. <laughs> so well, we're not gonna talk for 29 years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, but, uh, but the, oh. that's the peppercorn from mostly it's, it's, it's the aging of the barrel. Hmm. So they don't need no additives, it's all natural. Outstanding. Well, it is delicious. Uh, I'm Thank just you. sipping on some right now. And I would recommend everybody on the call uh, give themselves just a little bit and like when you're breathing a spirit, try to breathe through your mouth and give it a good smell. So you're gonna get all that peppercorn mint on it, on the aroma. I don't think a lot of people understand just how much like herb you get on good tequila. In this case, you're saying mint. It certainly has that nose. And uh, when you're thinking about making cocktails, mint, we're going to use some strawberry and we're going to use some mint <laughs> in these drinks because we're going to lean into things that like that nose. And a lot of people don't think of that because a lot of us grew up in a time when Cuervo was considered tequila. Um, and we have a very, <laughs> apparently tequila tastes like Chardonnay. Um, oh, so good. Okay. Well, let's, let's go into some cocktails. Somebody asked if a mezcal would work in these drinks. Yes. Mezcal, 
will make delicious cocktails. They will not taste like the cocktails that I'm making, but they will taste delicious. Uh, it, especially, I'm assuming if you have mezcal, it's because you like mezcal, you're going to like it in this cocktail. It won't surprise you that it's smoky. Uh, so thank you very much, Ray, for, for yeah. all that. And my mic, if you're still on the call, I'd love to uh, get some questions for you a little later on the program. Yeah, yeah I'm here. I'm here and I'm going to. Outstanding. Uh, also, Lee, I guess you're, uh, you're short some ingredients. So as we go through these drinks, just let me know what, we, uh, what our workarounds need to be. Okay. So, Thanks. of course. Um, so the first drink says coupe next to it. That's this glass. Uh, or any small, this is a five and a half ounce glass, so any small martini glass, small stemware is great. Uh, as a lot of you have heard me say before, um, if it holds fluid, it's going to work. Uh, but this is kind of a best case scenario. By Collins, I mean something like this, somebody like a tall, thin glass. This one's about 14 ounces. Uh, and then this is what I mean by a hurricane glass. But it's north of 16 ounces. So if you don't have a fancy glass, uh, go ahead and get yourself a pint glass. It'll work, a solo cup. It's gonna work. But <laughs> these are once again, best case scenarios. Uh, and for, for seriously best case scenario, we're gonna get these glasses ready. Now, if you don't have room in your freezer, which as of tonight, I don't have a freezer behind me. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna put some ice in these and then water them down and then put them to the side so that when we're ready to make those cocktails, our glasses are gonna be nice and cold. And then Okay, so I've got all three glasses with ice and water, chilling, quite literally, right there. And then we're gonna start on that first drink. Uh, for those of you who've done this before, you know how we're gonna do it. First one's gonna be mo more spirit forward, more really all about the spirit. Next one's gonna be a little more refreshing. And the last one's gonna be something you probably wouldn't normally try at home. <laughs> so this one's gonna be no exception. We're gonna finish with a frozen drink today. I hope you all have blenders. And if you don't, you remember how to pound some ice. I'm talking to you, Cornelius. Okay. So the first one, I usually start with the smallest ingredients first, as we've said before, so that if we mess this up anyway, uh, we can throw the least amount of money away. The last thing we put in the glass almost always is the spirit. Once again, if I mess something up, I don't want to waste any good, any delicious Coralejo tonight. So three dashes of these Amargo, which just means bitter in Spanish. Choncho, bitters. So they're bitters, uh, and they're from a Peru. So these are the bitters you normally think about when you're making um, Pisco Sours. So we're just gonna do three dashes right inside. One, two, three. Dashes, not drops. So like hot sauce dashes. And then a quarter ounce of the strawberry syrup. Here should look like that. The back should just say strawberries, sugar, water, because it's real stuff. I've got a bigger bottle. I like it more than you. <laughs> Quarter ounce of that. Any questions so far? Okay, good. Okay. And then, ah, we're doing the Koki Americano Rosa, which is an aromatized fortified wine, same overarching family as vermouth, but it's bittered with uh, gentian and quinine. Uh, you know, the, the, the bitter element in tonic, uh, the bitter element in, in, in vermouth and all kinds of other stuff, probably one of the bitter elements in these bitters. Uh, but it's, the base is wine. So think of it like vermouth. So Shannon, what should yeah. I use? If I don't have that. Uh, what aromatized fortified wine do you have? Like vermouth? Yeah, like vermouth. Uh, <laughs> I have like 
red vermouth, white vermouth, probably the vermouths that you've had in other classes. Okay. Do you have um, do you have any of the syrups? I have substitute syrups. Okay. Do you have strawberry syrup? I have a strawberry mixer. Oh no. I, um, do you have strawberries? No. I no. signed up two hours ago. Okay, that's fine. What fruit do you have in your refrigerator? Uh, raspberries. Perfect. Okay. Do you have like seven raspberries? Yeah. Perfect. Put those in this, put, put those in your mixing glass yeah. and muddle them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then add, which of the vermouths? Do you have, do you have that, the Bianco vermouth? Yeah. Not the, not the dry, the Bianco. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, put a half an ounce of that in there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Do you have tequila? Yes. Ex outstanding. <laughs> Okay, so now for those those of you who are on the normal normal progression, we've got three dashes of our bitters, a quarter ounce of strawberry syrup, and half an ounce of the Koki um, uh, Americano Rosso. Um, and now we're going to put two full ounces of tequila. We are getting down to business. Is this make a um a single or a double? Just a single, right? That's just a single, yeah. Believe okay. it or not. Um Dude, you don't have to drink all of it. We so will. Well, I guess we will now. Uh, okay, sounds good. So, <laughs> hmm. so the idea is the first cocktail is the most spirit forward. Think gin martini. Like it's about the booze. We're here to celebrate, elevate the spirit, right? The first drink, the spirit is the lead actor. The second uh, drink, the, um, the, the, the spirit is like a really important part of the cast. Uh, and the third drink, the spirit is a, uh, a vital section in the choir. <laughs> okay, so are we all up to speed? Cool. I'm going to take five to six nice big ice cubes. Now we're looking for, as we talked about before, nice large format if we can, cold ice cubes. We don't want them melting already. You can use a fancy, I've got some fancy glasses around here too, but you know, I was raised on these fine glasses. A few quick spins around the dance floor. And we're checking at this point. So we tasted a little bit of it before I added the ice. And then, mm. oh yeah. So what we're doing with just a hint of strawberry, a little bit bitters to, to balance it, and that nice uh, Maritano Rosso that really is gonna play well with strawberry and also has um, bitter elements. Uh, herbaceous elements, all of those things are going to play really well with tequila. And for bartenders, we love tequila. Uh, and the reason is, it's not technically a classic cocktail ingredient. So we get to kind of reinvent all those classics um, with a different kind of base. Uh, and, it, and it usually gives you spurs different ideas. Okay, so there's my lime. Oh, move stuff around here. Okay, so I'm going to use this channel knife. If you don't have one, you can just use, oh, this is a different channel knife. You can use a paring knife or a peeler. But what, whichever one you do, this is what I beseech you to do. Aim your drink at the top of the glass and then cut into the fruit. So as you're expressing the oils, as you're cutting the skin, you're, you can see it mist over the drink and then just smell the top of the drink it already smells like lime which somehow somebody might have thought works well with tequila already somebody before me uh there you go just i'm just going to touch lightly this the skin the green part to the top of the glass a qu couple quick folds around and then oops like that just coil it and then just kind of 
loosely on there like that. Something pretty, you know, with the eyes. That's our high altitude. Try that actually. Hmm. Okay. How do we feel about that? Wow. That's yeah? good. I'm glad. It's great to see you. Very good to see you. I'm afraid I didn't do a good job with the, the lemon well, thing. It's okay. So when you're doing, you do use a knife, right? Yes. I, I okay. so That's fine. That's fine. But if you're going to use a knife, oh, you have that. You have a channel line. I do. But sadly, it doesn't see, it didn't kind of cut through. Oh, Maybe so my have limes can be picky sometimes. So, but if you're going to use a knife, what I would say is press it down with your thumb first. Like that to kind of flatten it. And then when you take it across, just try to get just the skin. So you have leave white. And what you really don't want is any fruit on this side because when you're gonna twist. So if you do it, and that's fine, just kind of take your spoon or whatever and scrape the fruit off the back so you're not putting a bunch of juice in your drink. Because that would alter it. Yeah, I mean, we'll make drinks with lime juice in a minute. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Of course. Anybody else? Hmm. I only see like two people, so I'm guessing. It's wonderful. Outstanding. Cheers. Outstanding. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> so Excellent. how are the ladies Cheers. that thought this was two drinks? Okay. Danny, good to see you. Yes. Outstanding. Oh. Well, a lot of katadis represented. I love it. Cheers. It's delicious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. So good. Did you hear the new, uh, <laughs> you, I feel like celebrating. I this heard the CDC fun. announcement that you can walk around, no masks and stuff. I'm yeah. pretty excited about it. Really? Is, that in Durham? Uh, Is that in Durham only? No, no, that's, no, that's Durham. CDC. That's not Durham. CDC. Oh, awesome. That's North Carolina. They said, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah if, if, you're, if you're vaccinated, yeah. Yeah, if you're vaccinated, awesome. you're fully okay. vaccinated, like two weeks after your last shot, mm -hmm. that it's safe for you to be outside, inside, anywhere you want. Um, well, that's you're good to go. Well, it's a good day for the cocktail party, then. It's a good day for a cocktail party. <laughs> exactly. Well, hopefully exactly. they're going to get us some gas. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I that's think out there. I wouldn't worry too much about it. They didn't want everybody driving around too crazy, so they just got rid of all the gas. <laughs> we don't want people beating each other up over gas. Well, oh, God. Who needs gas when you can stay home and drink? Exactly. Right. <laughs> Haven't we learned exactly anything right. from this pandemic? We can drink at home. Exactly. <laughs> no, but seriously, come to my bar. <laughs> <laughs> Much safer. We were there last weekend. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Question for you, the Please. aperitif. Yeah. What else could you use that in? Because I tried it by itself and I didn't care for it, but it's okay. very good. It was very what? I didn't like it by itself, but in this drink, it's, it's very tasty. Oh, I'm so glad you like it in this drink. But um, for me to answer the other question, um, we're going to use it a couple of times tonight. So hopefully I'll give you a couple of ideas. But can you tell me what specifically you didn't like about it? It just seemed really almost too bitter or tart at the end. Okay. So that's, that's a really um, astute observation. So all of these aromatized fortified wines are bittered. Like, so vermouth gets its name from wormwood, which is bitter. Uh, this is a gentian kina. And basically they're name checking in the description of the product, the two things that it is bittered with. Both gentian and quinine are very bitter. Um, so if you didn't like it because it was a little too bitter at the end, mix it with something that's got a little sweetness. So like even some like a little orange juice, like this and like, like if you do a couple ounces of this and like an ounce of orange juice on the rocks, give that a whirl. Do you like orange juice? Yes, I like most Okay. Uh, oh. I would give that a whirl um, and see how you like it. Certainly it plays well with strawberry syrup. Um, as you can tell. <laughs> okay, any other questions before we saunter into our next cocktail? 
I don't have any questions, but you're being very humble, Shannon. Um, congratulations on your, your nominations um, for both you and Alley 26. I, oh, you don't know? okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Tell us more. Uh, I wasn't tell intentionally us more. humble. That was the first time I heard about it. Uh, <laughs> well, we'll, we'll vote for you for sure. So, congrats. well, thank you. Please, what everybody, all get in votes. Vote twice. What nominations? Um, well, yeah. It was, it was three. It was um, best specialty cocktail in Durham County. Um, there was one more, and then um, best mixologist. Or so there's three total. Al I Alley twenty six mm -hmm. for two, and then Shannon for best mix mixologist. Oh. So where okay. do you go to, Where do you vote? Online, I think, which means you can do it from wherever you are in Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. Is this the Indy? Monday. Is this the Indy? Indy yes. week, yep. Oh, okay, great. All right, thank yes. you. So, well, this is, this is positively celebratory. Yeah, now we really have to celebrate. Wow. Let's have a drink. Yeah, let's have a drink. Um, it's a great idea. Speaking of which, I happen to have another one right here. <laughs> so we were, we were kind of bad. We put a tiny bit of lime juice in it, and we like it a little bit better. Is that allowed? Okay, good. Good. <laughs> I have I have a very random question, Shannon. Please. This uh, the, the the top for the Chuncho bitters. Yeah. The little hole is is covered in plastic, and we can't get it open. Oh. <laughs> you have, to, you have a That's suggestion? I'm like. I do. To... Uh, I have a few suggestions. Uh, yes. One. Do you have a happen to have a bottle of uh, Angostura bitters around around? Uh yes. You can steal Angostura the dasher bitters? top off of that. Wash it off. Plug it on this one and use it. Okay, I, put okay. a hole in the, I put a hole in the top. Or just put yeah. a hole in the top. I've been yeah, trying to do that. Yeah. What you need to do is puncture, the, puncture a hole through that plastic. That's what I did. And then you could, you know, use it for drops. Okay, okay well, I'll, I'll work so, on that later. Okay. I guess more than, you were not the only one to have this issue, apparently. Okay. Yeah, apparently. apparently. We used a little just, tape one they, on they never had a hole in it like they have in the other ones. We had, the, yeah, we had yeah. the same issue too. Yeah, I, actually, now I can see it's the, whole, the one in mine. It's not factory correct, but it's, it works. That's right. It's, huh. it's just a malfunction in production. I think it's designed that way so that it doesn't spill, uh, is my oh. assumption. Okay. And then you just have to puncture a hole when you get it because oh. I've okay. other devices, you know, very similar to that. I didn't plan ahead, so we're at the oh. last minute here trying to... <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, thank you. Okay. Okay, we're moving on to another drink here. This one's called, we're calling Paloma Fresa, which is a really lazy way to name a cocktail. So Paloma is a drink originally. It's tequila and grapefruit soda with lime juice uh, on the rocks. So fresa just means strawberry. So, so this is our strawberry Paloma. Uh, so we're gonna go right ahead into that. And like the, other, like the other drink, we're gonna start with kind of smaller ingredients. We're gonna build up. When I'm making these drinks, I'm usually gonna go with the bitters first if they're in the drink, last if they're on top, uh, and then syrups next, and then acid, like if I'm using lime juice in this drink, um, I'll do that. And then um, uh, the booze last for previously stated reasons. Okay, so we got a quarter ounce of strawberry and a quarter ounce of mint. Like Ray was saying earlier, um, mint and tequila work really well. Herbs and tequila in general work well. Basil works really well. Those fresh spring herbs work really well. Okay. And then we're going to use uh, three quarters of an ounce of lime and three quarters of an ounce of grapefruit. Then we're going to taste this, make sure it, you know, meets our standard. Like you said about a couple of drops of, of lime being more to your liking. Um, this is where we make that decision. Yeah, that's going to open up nice. Um, 
if it ends up being too tart for you, uh, you can always sneak in a little more syrup. Um, but I like to make this drink really kind of gripping and refreshing. So we're gonna take our Collins glass that we chilled out, empty that out. Okay, I have a question though. Yes, please. Um, so I didn't, I didn't get the instruction to have grapefruit juice. Um, so can I have a grapefruit? Yeah, uh, that's where okay, the juice so comes just, from. Just squeeze that out? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I would take a quarter of that and do you have a jigger? You have a jigger? Yeah. Uh huh. Just squeeze carefully, like right into a cup and then measure it out. That's, okay. This is fresh grapefruit juice as well. Like we used, we started okay. with grapefruit. Gotcha. Okay, so I emptied the ice water that I was chilling that drink with. No, I I'm gonna do that. So in the old days, they always told us to put the soda on the bottom, or excuse me, on the top. I like to put it on the bottom. Or if I'm shaking something, that's gonna be a shake and that I pour the whole thing out. I'll put the often put the soda water in the tin right before I, I pour it out. But the, so, so. The important thing is you don't shake your bubbles because you'll lose all your bubbles. Okay. Um, okay, question. I don't have soda water. I have tonic and I have seltzer. Seltzer's perfect. It's okay. just soda water with salt. And the thing I like about Tobo Chico is it's mineral water, it says, force carbonated, which is what you want, like seltzer. You don't want a natural mineral water because it doesn't have enough bubbles. Uh, you want the fake stuff because they... They've really pounded it with carbonation, which is really what you want. And if you're lucky, you want, you want minerality. You want salt. Because just like food, salt makes things taste better. Okay, so once we get the ice in here, we're on the clock. So we shake and strain immediately, right? I'm just going to use... Like five nice big cubes. And we're just stirring. No, no, you're not stirring. We're gonna put that like that. I'm gonna give it like ten quick shakes. So that first drink was a stir, the second drink was a shake, and the last drink will be a frozen blender thing. Because why not? Okay. A little more soda. There it is. It should be this really pretty. Uh, no, I probably should have cut my garnish first. Okay. So, um, ah. Okay, so think tall glasses. Huh. Interesting. So, this is the one where you put in the Collins glass, right? And Thanks. There's our grapefruit. Um, we're stalling. We got we have folks ju juicing. <laughs> uh, so for a garnish, I generally cut it from pole to pole, like from top to bottom, lay it down, cut the end off there, and then nice thin slice. And then like that. <laughs> And if you've got mint, that makes a nice garnish as well. Excuse me, Shannon. Yeah. I have a tip on how to get this off of your... I do. Uh, first of all, turn it upside down. Turn it upside down. There you go. Okay. So, let's show you what you did. Which is good. You did it right. <laughs> okay. Doesn't okay, feel so, like it. So, it should be like that, right? What you've done with the... With the with the changing and making it really cold is cr created a, a, a vacuum. Uh -huh. So the only part you're worried about, the only thing you have to worry about is the last, the top millimeter of metal. Just the very top middle. It makes a perfect circle all the way around. What you wanna do is make it not a perfect circle for a fraction of a second. So you wanna hit right on the top, like, like, like that. Okay. Don't hit on the side, don't hit on the glass, don't knock it. Don't knock it against the wall. Okay. Oh, there you go. Got it. Got it. Thank you. 
Perfect. Now, um, we're straining it into the glass? Yes. You can just strain with that Hawthorne strainer that's in your right hand. How much tequila? Uh, that was an ounce and a half of tequila. Per, per drink. I'm making three at a time. Oh, okay. okay. There's three of us. Mm. Nope. And we're not driving. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, how would you? There's no gas. <laughs> I have a Tesla. We can drive anywhere we want. Oh. I was so focused on the grapefruit. And then we could put a garnish okay. on it and some lip. Some lip, lip. Some mint. Some lip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? That one working for you? Mm. Love the citrusy notes here. The grapefruit and the lime and, and then the strawberry. And oh, it's gorgeous. Thank you. I see this as being uh, my summer drink. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. That's good. We're, uh, we, we're really excited. We got, um, we're making strawberry syrup now year round. And every once in a while, we get to partner with a local farm. And uh, the folks at Botten and Barrel have a blueberry farm that, well, it's named Cedar Grove Blueberry Farm that conspicuously grows blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, and strawberries. So we have some strawberries from Cedar Grove Blueberry Farm uh, that we're making some syrups uh, out of all those berries from them. And that, so we're just, anyway, to, suffice it to say, we're very excited about berries right now. We're very, very excited. Would you make any changes uh, to this ratio if you were to just not use seltzer? Uh, would I make changes to this ratio if I didn't want to use seltzer? Yes. Um, yeah, if I wasn't going to use seltzer, you were going to just put it like a coop? Yeah. Or put it on the rocks? Uh, like in the coop. Uh, yeah, I would cut the lime and grapefruit down to a half a piece. Okay, great. Because you really, otherwise it's just, you need that much acid for that much soda, uh, but you don't really need it if without it. Okay, thoughts, questions, concerns, conundrums. Clarification. Oh, I'll ask a question. Oh, okay. Sorry. Go ahead, sir. Um, did you say pour the soda in the bottom, in the glass, or did you put it in your shaker? Did I what? Soda. Oh, did you put the it soda. in the glass or the, the shaker? Of the glass. Okay, so, all right, I got it right. This is, yeah, you did. So this is, sorry, I said something that could have been confusing. Um, if I was shaking like a mojito, so there's mint and there's lime in my shaker, and I'm gonna dump everything, including the shaken ice, into the glass. Uh, in that kind of drink, I'll often put the soda in my shaker after I'm done shaking, oh, wow. just to give it the volume there, and it'll help with my swirl when I pour it all into the, target glass. Does that make sense? But I don't want, yeah, yes. I wouldn't put it in the shaker and then shake it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, my question is about the um, grapefruit juice because yeah. we, can't, we can't have grapefruit juice uh, yet. Statin. So yes, yeah, so we put orange juice and I'm sure that completely changed this, but. Yeah, are you enjoying it? Yeah. Yeah. I just wondered if you okay. would advise something differently. I would. I would. Uh, either A, <laughs> go with like a, an ounce of lime and just forget the grapefruit, or B, okay. uh, instead of a three quarter ounce of uh, grapefruit, use like a quarter or a third ounce of, of lemon if you want a, like a different okay. uh, citrus to give it a note. <laughs> yeah. No. The orange just doesn't have no, the, the, the ratio of sugar. To acid and orange is just very different than all of those other ones. <laughs> so right. our whole group loves this drink. It's very, oh. like for summer, it's really refreshing. Cool. Thank you. Hot day on the deck. Hot day on the deck. Shannon, or, I think my wife has a new favorite drink. Excellent. Excellent. I mean, it's, but not it, you. I mean, we, you're, you're I still like waiting for that Caribbean cognac. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> Is it eagle eye for <laughs> eagle eye from pure white? <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Hey, Shannon. I, I, yes. I'm gonna um let Ray jump off. He's West Coast, okay. so he's got some cool. Stuff he can do. Thank you, Ray. Thank you very, Bye. very much. Thank you guys. Really appreciate Thank your you, time. Thank you, Matt. Thank Thanks, you. Ray. If anybody's got any questions on uh, tequila that Shannon right. can't come Welcome. Bye-bye. We can handle them, but uh, just throw them in the chat. I'll do my best to uh, – my 10 years' experience to replace Ray's 30. So, uh, <laughs> I appreciate it, Ray. Thanks. Matthew, appreciate your uh, – Sitting in for him. That's great. No problem. Um, Anything for you, Shannon. <laughs> are you making I'll these let... drinks, Matt? Are you making drink? Are you drinking along? I, I was drinking, and then my kids knocked the internet out, and I had to go downstairs. So now uh. I'm back not doing <laughs> We'll catch up. <laughs> we'll catch up on the drinks. That sounds about right. That, that sounds Paloma about right. Perfect. That Paloma looked perfect. I was on a call this morning, a Zoom call, and the cats were walking across the screens. And I was like, it's a whole new, whole new time. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, back to it. Sorry, sir. Oh, no, that's great. Um, might as well try this again. And it looks okay. so It's pretty, too, right? Yes. Who doesn't and like pretty? Um, okay. Well, I'm ready to move into the last one. And uh, this should be fun. Do we have blenders? Yes? Okay, let's get all those blenders ready. I'll give you a minute. Set your blender up. Uh, some, some people don't name Amy. They don't have a blender. Um, okay, but. if they don't have a blender, <laughs> we're going to figure this out. Um, if you don't have a blender, do you, do you have a, bar, a, a tablecloth? Not a tablecloth. That's, I didn't mean that at all. That's terrible. Okay. Do, do you have a kitchen towel? A clean kitchen towel? Okay, great. You're going to take some of your ice in said kitchen towel, but maybe like, like just like a fist's worth of ice. You're going to do this twice. Take like a fist's worth of ice, put it in the middle of your kitchen towel, wrap the towel around it in, in a ball, and then whack that thing on your counter until it's nice and broken up. Okay? Okay, everybody else has got a blender. And I'll, I'll try to stop to talk to, uh, but the folks that need to, uh, to the workaround for the blender, you don't want to put the ice touching the fluid until the end, okay? Great. Okay, so I got my. Shannon? Yes. If they had crushed ice on their um, ice maker, could they use that instead of beating up ice cubes? Yes, that'd be even better. <laughs> They have a fancy solution. But it's okay if you enjoy hitting the ice on the counter, even though you have your blender? Of course. Of course. <laughs> this is Excellent. Fun. Like, gets him. It's hard to feel bad after that. Like, you're like, whew, got it all out, you know? Okay. Actually, for sight lines, I'm going to move my blender in later. I'm going to move this in right now. Okay, so. We're going to talk through like frozen drinks in general and then this one in specifically uh says two cups of ice um i'm going to put fluid in first and then ice on top uh because sometimes if you don't get enough fluid in there uh the ice doesn't break up well but also if you have some crushed ice i like a blend of big cubes because you get it just gets colder and crushed ice so it doesn't tax the motor. Okay. We'll do that in a second, like I just said. Okay. So we're gonna start with the syrups. We got, it says an ounce and a half of strawberry syrup. That sounds like a lot, doesn't it? It's cause it's a lot, uh, but, but you need it. For frozen drinks, you don't get that creamy texture without sugar. There's, there's just no, other way about it. Uh, and cold uh, really affects your perception of sweetness. So if you've ever had an ice cold Coke, it, 
tastes like it tastes. And then you drink it warm and it tastes like you're drinking syrup because you're drinking syrup. Uh, so like cold really affects your perception. So frozen drinks need more sugar, both texturally uh, and actually for balance. Okay. Ounce and a half. Of the syrup, oh, stay on the syrup train. Just a scant quarter ounce of mint. And then, because as we've discussed, it likes strawberry. The Koki Americano Rosso, that's one ounce. So three quarter, another quarter is an ounce. Half an ounce of lime. That's right here. And one ounce of grapefruit. Okay. So the things below the ice line uh, on the, your sheet, <laughs> uh, we're going to float on top. So if you're wondering why I haven't put those in yet. And then of course, two ounces of Corleo Blanco. So yes, this is a big drink. If you feel like sharing it, that's, that's an option. If you feel like, hey, that's too much booze, use an ounce and a half. Okay. The only downside to using crushed ice in your blender is it doesn't make nearly enough racket. So we're going to use some big cubes. Some of that to the side. And here we go with. Okay. Take my hurricane glass and. Hey Shannon. That. Yes. So we've got a Vitamix, sort of like the one you got there. Yeah. And so, what are you going to push it on? What it what uh, set? I am going to put it on the variable, uh, as low as it can go, and then I'm going to crank it up until I get what I need. So, I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to knock that around a bit. Turn it off. I'm going to add some more ice. Technically, I could add it right through the top of the blender. Here's the thing. You got to go, unless you know exactly. I used to work at a, a blender bar. It was like actually my first job as a bartender. Uh, so I'd had a better feel for exactly how much ice went in each drink. If you don't, careful to um, put too much ice in. Because if you go past the mark, all of a sudden it's very to get back. It's hard to get back because it's, it's too thick, like there's too much ice. You have to keep dumping more stuff in there and you change the drink. You don't want that. So. Okay, I think we're good. You can, can you see tell it's, us the consistency? Because I think mine's too thin. Too thin? Then add just a few more cubes. Okay. You just keep putting it in. I was going slowly because once it gets too thick, it's really hard to get back. But so, so, so the first couple of times I stopped, mine was too thin. I was okay. just looking for, so you can add just a little bit at a time. Okay. You know, if you're making these for a party, after the first couple, you'll know. You'll be like, okay, that's how much ice. Ooh, I got a little leftover. Looks like Claire's getting a drink. It's just booze.
Now Claire gets the bigger drink, right? Oh yeah. That's right. You don't see what's happening behind the camera. Don't feel sorry for her. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do six dashes of this. When we put bitters like that right on top of a drink, what we're doing is we're really aiming for the nose. We really just want to make sure the nose is great on that. Quarter ounce of this. We're out of strawberry syrup. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> That little, we did two drinks of everything and that was it. Oh well, yeah, this one had an ounce and a half of strawberry syrup in it, so. Yes. We are going to have to get some of this pretty darn quick. Yes. It's good. It is good. There you go for that. And we're gonna go ahead and garnish this with a little mint. Anytime you're garnishing with an herb, ooh, hey, make sure you, kind of express the herb on the outside of that glass and then make it pretty. And then put the herb all around the straw so anybody sipping on it gets all that lovely mint in their nose. <laughs> Cheers. Happy springtime. Cheers. Mm. Yeah. How's that working for you? Cheers. Cheers. Another fabulous summer drink. Thanks. I didn't know it was going to be 40s this week. <laughs> that was so crazy. Ah. It's yeah. not 40s here. It was 40s. Mm. It's wonderful. Yes. Yeah, what part of Tennessee are you in? Knoxville. Knoxville, okay. We got to 70 today. You got to 70 today. Yeah, yeah we did too, I think right at 70, right? Yep. But then it's gonna be in the 40s overnight. It's chilly now. Danny, it was yesterday that it was 46 during the day. Yeah, that was unpleasant and it got colder as the day went on it was a cruel trick that was monday too, when <laughs> more the reason to stay home and drink exactly exactly but fortunately not everybody did because we were open last night <laughs> <laughs> that's why you opened indoors last night we did we did and we're we now have some limited indoor seating uh on the on the bar side and we're going to be slowly expanding into limited indoor seating on the side we're now shooting this video from. And then you'll be seeing me and Claire in the basement <laughs> shooting from the bar we just had made in the basement so we could keep doing these things. Please do. These are absolutely wonderful. And well, I look thanks. Every week. I'm sorry, every month. <laughs> every day? <laughs> every week? That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Oh. Agree every Friday, right? Every Friday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we could do that. Uh, well, we haven't officially decided on the spirit for next month's class. Um, and I'm interested, we were, we were leaning in a specific, should I say that, Claire? Yes. Why don't we take a poll? Does bourbon. Everybody, what bourbon. was that? Bourbon. Oh, bourbon. Already bourbon. Okay, this is the South. Every month is bourbon. Month. Um, <laughs> yeah, we did the, that was the very first one we did. Have you done gin? We did, have done gin. Oh, but we, we were, missed it. We were, we did um, a very specific one. We did Durham Distillery's limited uh, barrel aged, barrel rested gin that they did, which you can't get anymore because they sold it all. Uh, I, it so good. I think you should do gin again. You think we should do gin, gin again? Yeah, I would be okay with that. Not regular gin, not the barrel rusted. Not because I couldn't rusted. get it. Before. 
I can get out of the class. If we want to really go double down. I think what we that? Navy strength. We I said Navy the Navy strength. strength. If yeah. we want to double down. Yeah. Is that a Navy yeah. Strength. It's in the genes apparently. Claire's here going Navy strength. And so we ha we have a theory that you're either a brown liquor person or a white liquor person. At our house, we're white liquor people. So oh, oh. I have a theory that I like all the good booze, uh, regardless yeah. of color. We, 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 yeah. yeah. we, we, we were at that first bourbon class that you did. Okay. Gail and I with our husbands, and it was fabulous. We had so much fun. Oh, Jen? so much fun you ditched the husbands. I like it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we had such a great time that night. It was so fun. Um, Shannon, we should probably do another North Carolina another one for um, like a thousand peers. Really good, yeah. You know, I haven't had a thousand I peers, like but I got a, a text it's message from my sister okay. yesterday, yeah. and she showed me a picture. She's like, "Have you got this?" And she sent me this, sent me this picture from Chicago. I was like, "No, I haven't got that yet," but it's good, huh? Very good. It's got so much spiciness to it. Uh, it's not just your juniper. So I would thousand peers gin from. That's gin. Oh, that's gin. Okay. Well, the okay. issue, the only issue with that, and I love that idea. I'm certainly going to get a bottle of that. Um, the only issue with that is we were thinking of doing gin, but we were thinking of uh, maybe doing a, a, something that's more ubiquitous. <laughs> so, so somebody say in, you know, New Hampshire could just buy a bottle of it. Um, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's we, a good idea. Especially. We seem to be running against, running up against uh, this when we get too, um, too regional. I don't regret doing the Durham Distillery uh, gin, of course, especially that barrel rested. I'm a um, unrepentant fanboy. Uh, especially, but, uh, you know, in North Carolina, you can't ship it anywhere. So no. I agree with you. <laughs> no, they don't make it easy here. They, uh, they make it, they're good at making it, they're good at not being good. <laughs> Three people said rye, huh? Have we done a rye class before? We haven't. Okay. Yeah, we need rye. Okay. Okay. Oh, bourbon. Shit. So it sounds like American Rye's whiskey, a good bourbon or rye. And then, and what else? And then you, might be, uh, you mentioned using the, the gin. Have you talked to like the folks at Mystic or um, I'm going to say this wrong, Brothers Virgili or whatever? And no. Not doing a class with them. Right. Or the I chemist in Asheville? I, I haven't, the, the, hmm. I haven't talked to, uh, was his name Rim or, I forget his name. I haven't chatted in a the while. Their, their stuff is, their liqueur. Um, and I haven't had it in long enough, but it's also pretty darn pricey and pretty darn specific. Where one of the things we do is, is pick something like tequila and show you how versatile it can be. A lot of their uh, brothers, the brothers Regile, the the Krupnikus, uh stuff is specific enough where it's really hard to find. I wouldn't want to have a class where that was the base spirit in every drink. And, and a lot of the bottles are like three seven fives. They're like half bottles, and they're not cheap. Uh, three beer, beer garden. Back to the rye then. <laughs> And apparently nobody wants like that. Nobody wants <laughs> We did the vodka at the holidays, remember? I don't know if you remember. Yeah. Oh, I remember. Uh, yep. So, well. We, we did the can, clean lines. And it was good. We, we had a yeah, great time. What, what's, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. So, here's the thing. If you like vodka, you could have made all of these drinks with vodka. Um, no. The thing about okay, vodka. Okay, but you know I love what? tequila too. So you know. What was that? Well, I love tequila too. But yeah. Exactly. It's Great. It's different. Somebody <laughs> asked a question earlier about mezcal. Yes. Okay. We we just did a mezcal class two months ago. That was good. Mm. Ooh, a Fernet class. It'll yeah. be that person and us. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love tequila, but I don't like mezcal. I don't okay, know. I see. Uh, it's weird. Well, I'd say you technically can't like tequila without liking mezcal because tequila is mezcal. 
Okay, well, so, Lynn, I like all tequilas except mezcal. You should okay, try so. some of Shannon's drinks. You'll you'll have a different thought on that. So Do you think, okay. Maybe, maybe okay. you have Maybe I just have it you. in the right drink. Maybe because... we need a mezcal class then so I can uh, yeah. get on board. So, <laughs> when I... okay, especially so what you can do syrup. for the mezcal class is we load these classes on the YouTube. So all of this really racy stuff you've been saying, the whole world is going to say no. Um, <laughs> but so the mezcal class is on our YouTube site. So if you just go to YouTube.com, oh, okay. she's... Claire's going to do this. I can't talk in okay. the computer. Uh, she's going to drop that in the chat. And you can, so any of these classes, if you've missed, you can go back and watch. Except for Brandy. Okay. We had some technical yes. issues with Brandy. So I've, I've been to Mexico many, many times and mm -hmm. love to, you know, basically you just show up and the people I'm with just say, here are the tequilas you need to drink. And, and they introduced me to Mezcal. And, okay. and I thought I loved it. And I came home and this is what they sold me at the liquor store. And it's so smoky, I can't drink it. I okay, need so some. That, you don't want that one. I, um, I clearly know that. <laughs> so, you know, but so here, so, okay. Class. So here's, here's a couple of, so you, were you just, were you drinking them in cocktails or were you just sipping on them? Um, we were sipping on them with pieces of orange in them. A after okay, a nice so, restaurant, we were, we were, we were in Alaska, yeah, Alaska? Is that, am I saying it the right? Wait. Jalisco? Yes. Or Oaxaca? No, J A L I S C O. Yeah, Jalisco. Uh, so, so if you're looking for the mezcal you were probably drinking, was smaller batch, probably even single village mezcal. Uh, which, if you're going to get that here, you can, but it's not the cost it was in Mexico. I don't care uh, about the cost, it just has to be good. Yeah, okay, so perfect. So Mezcal Vida makes some really nice expressions that you Vida? can get. Mezcal Vida, did you say? Vida. Yeah. V -I -T -A. Like, v -I -T -A. like V I T A. Like V I D A. Like V I D A. Vida, Vida. Okay. Uh, so, and it's, okay, uh, sorry. V sorry, I I'm lying to you. I got my, my words confused. Uh, forget I said Vida for now. I'll come back to it in a second. Uh, okay. Mezcal Vago, V A G O. Uh, v -A -G -O makes some really uh, that they have in North Carolina. Is that where you're calling from? Are you from North Carolina? Yeah, I'm in Chapel Hill. Okay, perfect. So at the ABC, you can get Mezcal Vago, um, which just a regular Espadine is delicious, but you can go a little further up. They have an Elote, um, which is their, this is gonna get confusing. So suffice it to say, they distill Mezcal twice. Uh, and some of them are flavored. Um, in a certain style by hanging things over the still so that the, the thing kind of, it's almost like ginning, like you're infusing the flavor into the mezcal. And the one that Mezcal Vago does is elote. So they use roasted corn uh, and it's, it's delightful. Uh, but their single village mezcals are good and they have different varietals. Like Espadine is the most popular kind of, uh, of agave for mezcal. But they can technically use a whole, whole bunch. There's Tablas, uh, Crucius, Mexicano. There's a whole bunch of different styles. And they can actually make mezcal out of Weber Blue Agave, like tequila. Mm -hmm. um, but they're also allowed to use these other mezcals. Um, the thing Matt said about all tequilas mezcal is kind of true. Uh, in that they're all agave spirits. Uh, and but when you buy something called mezcal, unless it's a very weird product that like, offers like, you know, sin fumo or like without smoke, uh, you're going to get more of that smokiness uh, from the uh, distillation practice. We'll just say it's pre-fermentation practice, but some of the manufacturing process shows up in the end result product, which is that smokiness that you think of when you think of mezcal, uh, which is absent in tequila. Mm -hmm. So e even though they're both agave spirits, uh, there's different manufacturing traditions uh, that kind of give one a different kind of way. But people are really finding mezcal now because there's a lot of terroir. You know, wine drinkers that love the thingness of a place 
with, with specific wines from specific places are finding that in Mescal. Like if you go to certain villages. So another thing, another brand you would like is Del Maguey. Uh, D-E-M-A-G-U-E, uh, I believe. How do you spell it? Del Maguey. Uh, but they have Vita, which is their blend. Uh, so it's a little less expensive. Uh, but they also, what they became famous for doing was they released all of these single village mezcals, um, which taste completely different from each other. They're all a little higher alcohol than tequila generally comes in at, uh, but really expressive and very individual to their place. So I think something like that is what you were probably tasting and enjoying uh, in Mexico. Not, I don't know who, who owns that brand. Matt, do you know who owns that brand? Yeah, that's a, that's a Cuervo uh, owned. It's a Cuervo brand. brand. Okay, exactly. Yeah. I mean, they don't make it at the uh, same distillery, obviously, but uh, it's Proximo. Yeah, so that's that's a Cuervo owns that product. It's that's not a small family owned no, thing, yeah. and it, it's yeah. a bottle. I couldn't see it clear enough. Did that say Reposado on it? It's the only one they have in North Carolina that Creente, but I think it is aged. Okay, so which is also legal and done but unusual. Like, so mezcal is almost always hoven or unaged. Yeah. So, so the one you had- Just get rid of that one? Is that what you're saying, Shannon? Just get rid of that one and get some good mezcal? <laughs> uh, I'm just saying it's not what she's looking for. Uh, <laughs> it's not what she's looking for. I don't sell it at all, but I can promise you that Vago Elote, for what you can get here, is the way to go. Yeah. Pretty much just end it there. I mean, there's a couple other ones you can run into, but- uh, in North Carolina, we aren't very uh, good at yeah, getting uh, no, <laughs> you know, Alpen or Bay Compo yeah. or one of the other. Ones. Oh yeah, I, there's there's a lot of really great mezcal being imported into this country. It's just not being imported in the state. <laughs> we, I'm going um, to keep an open mind on mezcal then. Oh, we make. Oh, is that right? Yes. Okay, I'll so keep an open mind. for all of you. A, thank you for tuning in again. We really appreciate all of your friendship and support through this whole last year or so. We're going to keep doing this because we're having so much fun. If you're in the area, please do stop by. Uh, we have something that you might not have heard of. It's called our Industry Insider Series, where we, if you really want to geek out, uh, we have myself, Claire is in charge of it, because uh, as with all things here, uh, but with... Um, Luke and I have conversations with different people from the business. Uh, like Ray is somebody we might be chatting with soon. I'm just saying that, I'm just saying. Um, but so this last week, um, we spoke with Ben Boyce uh, from, from Dalmore Scotch. Uh, and he was really, had a great story, told us all about the distillery, told us all about the expressions. It was a really interesting conversation. And that happens on Tuesday nights at seven and it's free. This coming week, uh, we're interviewing um, Lynn House, who's the uh, national brand educator for Heaven Hill. Specifically, she's the one who helped them reformulate uh, Dubonnet, which just like <clears throat> this guy. Oh, we have some right here. Let's see if my microphone cable will take me. Ah, this. So this is an old French aperitif, uh, a wine aperitif. Uh, so it's a bittered, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quinine infused one. And uh, Heaven Hill Distillery in, in Louisville had the rights to it. And then a few years back, they decided they wanted to retool it and kind of basically reverse engineer the French version to make it taste like the French version instead of like whatever in a bottle. Uh, so she was kind of helped steer that. And she's going to be on the, uh, the free podcast, not pod, webcast, whatever our free cocktails and conversation. And we're gonna make three different cocktails with this, uh, one with tequila, one with rye, and one with bourbon. So for folks that say they like tequila, rye, and bourbon, we've got some cocktails coming up <laughs> on Tuesday, 7 p.m., free of charge. <laughs> oh, it's, it's listed in the Facebook event. If you wanna get the ingredients ahead of time, you're welcome to. Um, and we will take all of your suggestion, certainly, into, um, uh, as far as all of the many suggestions we got for what spirit to do next. Um, and we'll probably be doing those soon. 
so Matt, you uh, have any uh, final words on tequila specifically or on anything? No, I thank everybody for uh, coming out tonight. Uh, you know, if you guys are ever interested in uh, learning more about uh, Coralejo, Shannon can probably help you there in-house. In but uh, if he has a question, don't, don't be afraid to reach out. It's, it's a great distillery. It's one of the few that's not in Jalisco. Um, if you ever find yourself down in San Miguel de Allende or Guanajuato City, some great places to visit in central Mexico, um, hop on down. Uh, you'll drive through a lot of strawberry fields. So those were very uh, <laughs> apropos cocktails tonight because uh, really they make more strawberries. They grow more strawberries than uh, agave in, uh, in uh, Guanajuato. So uh, that you drive and you keep driving a little bit further. You go to Michoacan, they grow some limes. You drive a little bit up the hill, you're in Jalisco where all the agave is grown. So um, a lot Sounds of perfect. stuff here in the cradle of the uh, central uh, Mexico. And uh, the distillery is always open and uh, you can try everything. It's, it's great. It's, it's an amazing experience. Well, I, I thank you. And uh, I will say we haven't always had the largest uh, tequila selection here. We're in North Carolina and that's kind of detrimental. Uh, but we have always had the full line of Coralejo. Uh, it's, it's something I like to have a, a tequila through all their expression so that people can taste kind of the effect of, of the, te the tequila maker on, on the juice. Like, so you have the same juice going through more age and different barreling. Uh, and I really love, especially in North Carolina, uh, Coralejo, especially for the money is, is, is hands down our favorite here uh, at to use. Uh, so keep bringing in good juice, please. <laughs> we will, as long as we can get it. So uh, looking, hey, Durham carries all of them and uh, sometimes they carry even the higher end ones we get, if you get lucky. So uh, they're okay. uh, special orders and, uh, and, and sometimes you can run into them, so. Perfect. Well, thank you and thank everybody. And uh, cheers, everybody. Maybe thank next you. month. Maybe next Cheers. time. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. It was awesome. A lot of fun. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye.